Yeah, we getting started early. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven. YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and man What we've all been waiting for first Let me start by saying don't let anybody tell you not to be excited about this I've seen people hop on Twitter man y'all excited about Lamar Jackson seeing him throw passes to wide-open receivers with no defenders on them in an open field Is that something to really be excited about? Yes, it is is don't let nobody try to kill your vibe about that reason being because the last time we saw lamar jackson throw passes he looked about as beat up as this ravens logo on my hoodie because remember when they had him out there for that practice and he was all limping around and hobbling and it, it, it just looked bad and ravens fans we have missed lamar jackson badly the ravens have missed <laughs> lamar jackson badly because we know what this team is with Lamar Jackson and we know what this team is without Lamar Jackson. Shout out to John Harbaugh because John Harbaugh in his season ending presser, it took long enough, but anyway, in his season ending presser, he said, he said, I, I talked to Lamar and Lamar, he, he's right on schedule, right on track. And he told me as soon as the Super Bowl's over, he's going to start practicing. All right, Harbaugh, we'll see. And we saw I said, oh, okay, 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 hey, J.H., Mr. Hall, good, good stuff. But it was nice to see. And it was nice to see him get it in with his receivers, both Rashad Bateman, last year's first-round pick, and then James Proche, who said he is never going to miss the playoffs again. And hopefully that stays true. Now, um, what does this mean? What does it mean that he was working out with his receivers already? Like, I was surprised because I'm like, man, like the Super Bowl was literally just a couple of days ago, literally just a couple of days ago. To me, this shows that, hey, they trying to get this thing right already. They trying to get this thing right from the jump. They trying to get this thing in motion. And the more that they can work together, the better. Now, one thing to please keep in mind. Because I know this happens every offseason with people and everybody jumps to conclusions and they start driving themselves crazy. Because, and, and a couple of things. Now, I know with all the, the rumors and stuff and all the craziness that's just been being talked about with Hollywood Brown in the past 24 hours. I know there are going to be people like, oh man, Hollywood wasn't there, where was he? Is, is there some... Be and let's just, let's just let it play out. But another thing, because like just like last year... There were some receivers that weren't there initially, but then they all ended up showing up. But another thing that's even more important than that is that just because somebody does not put their workout on social media, just because somebody doesn't record themselves throwing or catching passes or running routes or blocking or weightlifting or whatever it may be, just because somebody doesn't post it, it does not mean that they are not working. Now, I know for a lot of people, they like seeing is believing. Of course, in this day and age of social media, everybody wants to see their favorite players working out. Everybody wants to see their favorite players posting a video. So when you see some favorite players from one team post a video, but you see other favorite players from that same team not post a video, it can drive some people crazy. But try not to let it drive you crazy because again, just because somebody doesn't post everything that they're doing, it doesn't mean that they're not doing it. And even on the flip side, just because somebody posts themselves working out, it doesn't, that doesn't even mean that they on the grind like that 24-7. So just, just relax. Just relax as we head into what I'm sure 
is going to be a crazy offseason. I mean, it's already been a crazy offseason, and we only been in it for a couple of days. Because, I mean, the end of Ravens' regular season was crazy. The, the, the playoffs throughout for Ravens fans was crazy because it was just a lot going on. There has still been a lot going on. But anyway, this is good. I like it. I'm with it. I got no problem with them posting this. And I'm sure Lamar just wanted to give everybody a friendly reminder of, hey, <laughs> I'm still around. Uh, Y'all keep forgetting about me. Y'all keep, <laughs> like, so, like there was a list that Nick Wright came up with. And, and he said that the Ravens, it was all these, these tier lists about uh, projections for next season. And he said for the Ravens, the tier that they were on was questionable at the quarterback position. Now, some other teams that were questionable at quarterback were um, – were the Titans, and oh, it was another one too. But I'm like, anyway. Um, but I think Lamar more so wanted to show everybody, like, hey, I'm healthy, I'm ready, I'm here, I'm I'm good. And boy, like, man, that that is that is what we want to see from every single Ravens player this upcoming season. Because last year, oh. Last year, we already know what last year was, or really what last year wasn't, because uh, everybody got hurt. It was so sad, man. But this is a good sign. He looks like he's 100% ready to go. He was moving around. You saw his footwork and all that. And it was like, all right, let's go, Lamar. And Rashad Bateman, him having Rashad Bateman and James Proche out there. Now, that's, um again, another good sign. A good sign that and again, with them doing this so early, like, it's literally February. We usually don't start seeing these kind of videos till, like, maybe, like, April, May. Um, but this, this this is cool, man. So, hopefully, they will continue to do this when they have opportunities to. Now, you also got to remember, football players, this is their off season too, and they're allowed to have downtime. So, again, back to the whole social media thing. Don't get upset when you see your favorite football player out on a boat or something, uh, at home relaxing, posting a picture of themselves just chilling on the beach or something. Football season, as fast as it comes and goes, which is so sad, they're allowed to have off seasons. They're allowed to have lives too. A lot of fans tend to forget that. And a lot of fans are like, hey, you play for my favorite team, so the only thing I want to see you doing is working out, and if you're not working out, then it better be during the regular season, and the only thing I want to do is see you playing football on that field. Fun? You want to have fun? Are you crazy? No, you're not allowed to have any fun there, buddy. No fun for you. Remember, NFL, no fun league, and I mean that. That's how a lot of fans operate, and that's how a lot of fans think. A lot of fans think these football players, they have to live for the fans, and that's it. It don't work like that. It, it really doesn't. A lot of fans, they can, oh, I'm, I'm paying money to see you play every Sunday. I'm a season ticket holder. I pay for the direct TV, the, the, the Sunday ticket. I do this and I do that. I buy jerseys. I... And that that's great. You know, the, the football players appreciate that. The NFL appreciates that too. Uh, but they're allowed to have days off. They're allowed to relax. They are people too. I just wish a lot of fans would put themselves in the, the player's shoes. I wish a, a lot of fans would even think about their own jobs. Your job that you work hard at. Do you not deserve a break? Do you not deserve time off? Do you not deserve a chance to relax? Are, are you spending every single day and ounce and hour and, and minute trying to get better at your job when you're not there? I don't think so. I don't. But anyway, just 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 something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, this is good. With James Prochet, um, this it's no surprise seeing him working uh the way that he works because we remember we, we would hear all these stories about it, about James Prochet, about how he's um he would be the first one there and the last one to leave, and then of course we saw uh the video he posted mm, about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, of him just running. Uh, and that's where he, he put that caption that he was never going to miss the playoffs again. Um, and with Proche, it's like we know that he, uh, right now, he probably, he probably got the best hands on the team. 
Yeah, he probably does. Um, but he has the least opportunities. And we know that not everybody is going to get 50 balls thrown their way every year. That's not how it works. You have your, your top receivers, your receivers who are out there on the field the most. Um, but we, we do want to see other guys get shots, too. We want to see other guys have opportunities, have chances. Um, and we just want to see them use them used to their skill set. Uh, we want to see them put in the, the best position to succeed. Uh, and with James Prochet, this is good because... And this is good for Rashad Bateman as well because we know Lamar and Hollywood, they like that. We know Lamar and Mark Andrews, they like that. And coincidentally, <laughs> those are the guys that get the most targets. Now, uh, with Rashad Bateman and James Prochet, just because they're working with Lamar right now, it does not guarantee anything. But this can improve their off-field relationship. Not to say it's bad, but it can make it even better. And then that, in turn, could help improve their on-field relationship. So it could create more equal opportunities. Well, it ain't going to be equal, but it could create more opportunities for everybody else. Uh, just gaining that trust, just gaining that rapport, just building up that chemistry. Just really, like, because you see when, when quarterbacks and wide receivers got chemistry, it takes their game to a whole nother level. You look at a Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, their chemistry, like they you could they know each other, and it's like that, man. It, it's really like that. It was like that with Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown. They had that that extra chem well, Ben Roethlisberger, he had a lot of chemistry with a lot of his receivers, like Heinz Ward too and Antoine Randall. But anyway, with Antonio Brown, it was like that. They had that chemistry. When Tom Brady had a Randy Moss. Oh, boy. I mean, like any quarterback could really have chemistry with Randy Moss. All you got to do is throw it up there and he'll go get it. Um, and there are a lot of other examples. Tony Romo with Miles Austin. Oh, man. Them back shoulder throws went crazy, man. I don't know if y'all if, if remember Miles Austin. I know that was a little bit ago, not too long ago. But my point is <clears throat> when the quarterbacks have that extra chemistry and you really know what your receiver is going to like Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup. You know what your receiver's going to do. He knows what you're going to do. And, and y'all can really get a feel for each other in different situations. It, it is the, one of the most beautiful things in the world. Look at Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. <laughs> like, So it, when, when you see that chemistry, it's something special. So a quarterback's not going to have that same chemistry with every single wide receiver on a team. It would be nice, but that's like we wouldn't expect that. But he can have chemistry with all of his receivers and this is just the start so hopefully this um continues it just turns into something great and the ravens can really do everything that they could possibly do um to just really take their game to the next level and the players they need to be held accountable um they they got some stepping up that they got to do uh, of course we Talked about Greg Roman coaching Harbaugh, every everybody. Eric DaCosta, like this offseason, it is so big for everybody. Everybody got to step their game up all the way. And that's just to be competitive. You got to step it up another notch if you're going to be competitive and successful. So Ravens, they, they, they got a, a shot here to do something serious, to make some noise. Because a lot of people forgot about the Ravens. A lot of people forgot about the Ravens, and you can understand why, because of recency bias, because of those last six games, because so many people got hurt and whatnot and ended up being out for the season. So Ravens, they weren't this hot team. They they had been, but then when, of course, when Lamar went out, it was like, oh, okay. And people forgot about the Ravens, and and I, I understand why. Like I said, I get it. I, 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 when, so I kind of know when Ravens fans they say, oh man, all these people, they, they, they talk about the Ravens like they fell off. They did fall off at the, at the end of the year. We know to why the reasons were that they fell off because they lost six straight. They lost Lamar Jackson. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. So that erased Baltimore from a lot of people's minds. But they are in a position where they can give everybody a wake up call. And they can sort of, uh, not that they'll necessarily be underdogs. Well, they kind of will. 
Because everybody's like, all right, hey, Bengals, they, they got the AFC North now. They just came from the Super Bowl. Even though they lost it, they swept the AFC. Well, not the AFC North. They swept the Ravens and the Steelers. They didn't sweep the Bengals, though. But anyway, um, they, they were at the top of the AFC last year. Swept the Chiefs, swept the Raiders, the Titans. They did their thing last year. So everybody's like, all right, AFC, Bengals, Chiefs, Bills, da 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 I ain't really talking about Ravens like that. And now Ravens, they got the fourth place schedule. Um, not that that necessarily means it'll be easy. That doesn't mean that because I don't think any NFL schedule is easy because these are teams that can show up too. We've seen it so many times. We're in Ravens games where there's supposed to be these teams where Ravens supposed to just dominate them. But Ravens, they end up getting dominated. Um, and it's happened to plenty of other teams along the way as well. Uh, so it's it's important that the Ravens just know the task that's in front of them, the challenges uh, that lie in front of them, and they end up taking care of business. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all so much. I hope that everything is going really, really good for y'all. Um, this, <laughs> this off season is just it's crazy, and it just got started. Uh, we have plenty of questions from subscribers to do. We have a lot that are done already. Um, and y'all will see those videos in the short future. Um, but I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all stay up. Hey, reach out to your family. Reach out to your friends. Check on them. Let them know. Uh, or check on how they doing. Let them know that you, you're doing all right, too. See if they need anything, even if it's just a talk or text or whatever. Check up on your people. Love you. Stay up. Stay safe. We out.